is tut. Hello everybody and welcome back to Tipta and welcome back to Intro to Photoshop episode 2 now. My apologies, first of all, you may hear my cat freaking out in the background. Um, she's having a bit of an odd day today, so feel free to ignore that. And let's dive right in. Uh, last time we placed, manipulated and edited this image and we took a quick look at some of the adjustments that you can make when you place an image or a layer into your scene. We might go a little bit further into these, I might leave them for later tutorials. The best thing you can do for yourself as a designer is come in here and have a play. Um, with that in mind, it's probably going to be best to learn how to duplicate your layers so that you don't end up damaging something beyond repair. You can always have the first one that you brought in. And that's really easy to do. You can either select a layer and hit Control J to duplicate it, that's Control J, or you can right click and choose duplicate and you can do other things from here as well like delete it, group it, etc, etc. What I am going to do is duplicate this layer and then I'm going to hide the original one. And all that means is I'm going to work from the duplicate so that if I do anything damaging and I don't have enough in my history to go back that far, I'm not going to have to worry too much. OK, what we're going to do now, though, is start to manipulate it and see some of those geometric, uh, some of those geometrical rather rather than geometrical uh, shapes that you saw in the original image. Now there's a few ways you can do this using masks or straight up using the selection tool. I'm gonna to use a selection tool and I'm gonna show you a little bit with masks later on. So if you go up to your marquee tool up in the top left corner of your screen, um, you can see that you'll probably start drawing little boxes and there's these little marching ants that go around. What this tool is designed for is directly selecting media on your artboard, okay? And the first thing that I wish someone had told me was how to get rid of this bloody thing once it's on there. Because you can't just get rid of it by clicking. Well, you can now, but you couldn't before. However, if you've got loads of selections going, you can just hit Control D to remove that as well, okay? So let's look at duplicating just a portion of this image here. So if I just hit Control J with the layer selected, it's gonna duplicate everything on that layer, okay? However, if I select a portion of my screen, say for example, in that original image, there was a strip going down the middle which had been flipped horizontally. So if I select, let's say like so, and if you've got Smart Guides turned on, which you should, it'll actually tell you when you've selected something that is directly in the middle, okay, by highlighting these pink lines. So draw something like that. Obviously, if you're using your own image, which I highly recommend so that you're not just copying me, do whatever you think looks good, okay? Now, with that image selected in this way, I can move this around by just clicking and dragging, okay? But if I try and move this with the actual move tool selected to physically move this piece of media that we've selected here, it's gonna tell me that I have to move the whole layer. And there is a good reason for that. That is because, as we discussed in the previous episode, this is being treated as a smart object and you cannot directly edit a smart object's pixels. To do that, you have to rasterize it. Now, to rasterize it, you can right click and choose a rasterize layer. But that rasterizes the whole layer and we want this one to remain unrasterized for as long as possible. So I'm going to hit Control Z to undo that. And all I'm going to do is duplicate the layer with this selection box made. Control and J. What that does is it realizes it can't duplicate a smart guide or a portion of a smart guide that we've selected. So instead it rasterizes the layer and then duplicates. So if I hide that original one, you can see now that we have a strip of that original image that has been duplicated. Okay. But at the moment it's exactly the same as the one below it. So you can't tell what the difference is. This is where the transform tool comes in handy. If you hit Control and T, that brings up the same controls that you saw when we were placing that image beforehand. Now, there's no X in the middle because this is treated as straight up pixels since we've rasterized it, not as a smart guide image, um, a smart object image rather. So if I start messing around and shrinking this and scaling it back up again and all that, we're going to start losing quality, which isn't something that we want to do. However, I can rotate it or I can scale it like so without losing any quality okay start playing around with this depending on your image it's going to obviously depend on what you want to do but what i want to do is just flip it horizontally and there's an easier way to do that with your um, image selected or your layer selected 
go up to edit and transform and this brings up some of the different options now scale rotate skew distort perspective and warp can pretty much all be achieved by hitting Control t and clicking or dragging different parts and different areas of your line design if you hit Control and do it for example then you can manipulate a corner by itself on your image if you hold alt while doing it you'll do it by the center like we discussed before if you click one of the edges you can stretch just the edge if you hover just outside the line you can rotate uh, all these sorts of things if you drag and move this little x in the center that affects the central anchor point of your image so you can rotate around a different point all that stuff under here under edit and transform okay in this section can be done by hitting Control t and a series of shortcuts however um, I want to just flip this horizontally so with my layer selected edit transform flip horizontal and you can start to see our original design taking shape okay that's that step done but now I want to draw a little box around his torso just for the hell of it um, and this is going to involve a mask. Okay, so we're going to do exactly the same thing we did before. We're going to select our original layer. We're going to go over to our marquee tool, and this time we're going to draw a perfect square. Now to do that, we're going to click and drag, and then hold Shift, and that locks to a perfect square until we get one roughly the size that we're happy with, maybe like that. Then with the marquee tool still selected, I'm going to drag this until my smart guides appear, and I know that I'm centered on the image. OK, I'm then going to do the same thing and hit Control and J. Now, this is where we're going to start working with masks. At this moment in time, with these duplicated layers, we have done something destructive. And what that means is we can't get this information back. The information that we've deleted from these layers is gone forever. OK, with masks, you can hide that information, like, for example, hiding the middle of this square but still bring it back later on if you wanted to, okay? And that's really easy to do. All you need to do is go down to this little icon on the bottom of your screen under your layer with the right layer selected and click it. It looks like a rectangle with a hole cut out of it. What that'll do is add a white box with a, a chain icon next to your image. And what this white box means is that's your mask. At the moment, it looks like it's done nothing, but that's because with a mask, you can treat um, one rule as true. And that rule is if it's white, it is completely visible. If it's black, it's completely invisible. If it's gray, then it's that level of gray not visible. So if it's very light gray, then it's going to be about 90% visible. If it's a very dark gray, it's going to be about 10% visible. And the way you can control this white or dark, this light or dark um, mask here, is by your tools over on your left hand section. For example, the brush tool. If you click the brush tool, you can see that we have a different menu appearing up the top here, this subcontextual menu here. You can control things like the brush size, and it gives you a nice little preview of that up here. You control things like the hardness, so how hard or soft the edges of your brush are. And you can do all sorts of other things as well by creating new presets and opening up the brush manager, which we'll get into at a different time. At the moment, you can see that I've got a white brush here. That's the foreground color. And if I start painting, nothing's going to happen because our mask is already white. Whereas if I make a black brush by the clicking the little switch foreground icon or by double clicking this swatch and choosing the color, okay, and then I start scribbling, it's going to start what looks like erasing portions of our image. However, you can see our image in the layer panel is still all the way there. It's just masked out the area that we've drawn on. So if I undo that, that's one way to do it. However, what you can't draw a perfectly neat square, you know, with just the brush tool and then fill it in and like that. That's not going to work, is it? What you can do now is go back to your marquee tool, okay? And you can click and drag until you find something you're happy with. Now, I want to make sure the thickness of one of these sides of these squares is roughly the same thickness as uh, this middle portion here. So I'm going to uh, increase the uh, size of the square until it roughly matches up and then bring it to the middle of our image and see how that lines up. So like, yeah, that is about just a bit smaller, but that's okay. Just about as thick as that distance there. Now I can get my brush tool and I can scribble to my heart's content outside of this and nothing will happen. But if I scribble to my heart's content inside, it's going to start hiding, which is perfect for us. Now that's the slow beginner's way of doing it. Okay. Now that I've shown you that, I'm going to do it in the quick way. 
I'm going to delete my layer mask and I'm going to try again. OK, so I'm going to grab my marquee tool first this time. I'm going to draw myself a box. Maybe I'll go uh, a little bit smaller like that. I'm going to drag it to the middle of my image and then I'm just going to hit the mask tool with that box selected. And what that will do is it will make a mask uh, that is the direct size of that selection box. But, oh no, it's done it the wrong way around. No worries at all. All you've got to do is invert the colors on this mask here. And that's very easy to do. With the mask selected, just hit Control and I to invert. And we've done the exact same thing that we just did, apart from the fact it took us 20 less clicks. Okay. Let's bring back in our image behind this as well, like so. And this time we're going to do the same thing that we did before. Edit, transform, flip, horizontal. And it's starting to look pretty good. I like that. The next step is to start manipulating this with some layer styles. OK, and this is things you've probably seen before, like drop shadows, uh, glowing images, that sort of thing. We're going to do that to some of our image here. However, at the moment, if I applied a layer style, it would only apply to one of these layers. For example, if I added and we will go through this, don't worry, if I added a quick drop shadow, to this image, you can see if I drag this all the way up and hit OK, that it's only put a drop shadow around our square box here and not around our other element. And that's because we just applied it to a single layer, which I'll just undo. If you want to apply it to multiple layers, the best way to do that is to group them. And that's really easy. Just select the layers that you want to put in a group and then you can click this little folder icon down the bottom or you can hit control G to group those together. And that just makes a little folder. Now, whatever effect I apply to this folder, it's going to apply to everything that is inside it. OK, so effects drop shadow. And now it's applied that same drop shadow to everything in that folder. It's a bit strong, though. Um, so I'm going to start adjusting this. But before I do, I'll go into what the details of layer styles are. So layer styles allow you to, believe it or not, style your layer. <laughs> OK, so you can either do it by hitting the effects button down here or you can go up to the layer icon, layer style and choose it from here. Again, they do the same thing. This is just a quicker way of getting to it. If you hit here and choose blending options, that will open up the window you've just seen without applying anything so that you can go through and choose what you want. OK, if you click this little icon and choose an icon, a uh, layer style from down here, like drop shadow, it will apply whatever your last version of that was to the effects. So you can start working straight away. I'm going to reduce the opacity or see throughness of this um, drop shadow because it's a bit strong at the moment. And then I can start messing around with these little icons down here. For example, I can increase the distance, but reduce the size down to zero. And what that does is increases the distance of the shadow from the original. And the size is basically directly comparable to blurriness. So if I increase the size, it's going to get more and more blurry. For this one, I want the distance to be zero, the size to be fairly big, the opacity to be about 35. And the spread basically affects when the darkest point of that or the closest point of that starts. So if the spread was at zero, it would start sort of at the line. And if you increase the spread to the point where it's further than the size, it will actually overlap the blurriness of the size. OK, I'm going to leave it again on zero for now. That's all I want to do to this layer. But again, for the sake of teaching, I'll show you a few of the other options, like, for example, bevel and emboss. Bevel and emboss allows you to control the sort of a chiseling, either embossed or uh, beveled, I suppose, uh, either a standout or chiseled in effect of your layers that you've selected. You can increase things like the size, how soft it is. Um, you can change the angle of the shading. You can change uh, the, the light pattern on the shading into some really weird ones if you wanted to. And you can also change things like the highlight mode and the shadow modes um, blending mode, which we will get into in a minute because that's better explained when applying it to a layer directly. OK, you can do other things as well, like add a stroke, uh, a bright red one around the outside, for an example. Uh, you can add a shadow to the inside again, much like um, it was with the hue saturation curve tools, things like that. This is the best thing for you to do. Just have a play around and see what these tools can do. OK, um, what we're going to do now is just leave it on drop shadow, for example. OK, and hit OK. We're happy with that. That's the way it is. That will do for now, I think, for this episode. Uh, next time, we're going to look into 
blending modes. And we're going to look into creating shapes finally. OK, creating elements on your stage and then we'll finish it off with a little bit of text. So thank you very much for watching, everybody. Thank you for sticking with me if you made it this far. And we'll see you next time on the next episode of Tip Top. Remember to subscribe for more tips, tricks and tutorials. Thanks for watching.